So welcome to today's Postgres World Webinar, Learning PostgreSQL. We're joined by Dave Stokes, Technology Evangelist at Percona, who's going to discuss pgexercises.com, which is an option that doesn't require installation or access to a Postgres server. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about your speaker. Dave Stokes is the author of MySQL and JSON, a practical programming guide, and he has roughly 25 years of Postgres experience. He's currently a technology evangelist at Percona, and in his free time, he plays guitar. So welcome. A few logistical Thank you, notes. Yeah, a few logistical <laughs> notes, and then I'm going to um, hand it over to Dave. So the first is that um, all attendees are on mute to avoid background noise and to preserve audio quality. The second is, yes, we are recording this. Um, I'm going to post it on the Postgres comp site by early next week. And finally, my favorite is that questions are encouraged. Um, they're going to definitely be answered at the end of the session, maybe even if it's pressing in the moment. You can ask your questions through the chat function um, that'll be on the right side of your screen. It'll be red live button that says live stream chat. So please drop your questions in there as they come to you. Um, I think that's all for me. So I'm going to hand it off now. You can take it away, Dave. Okay, thank you very much, Lindsay. Uh, once again, I am Dave Stokes. I am a technology evangelist for Kona. Uh, you may have known me for my nearly 15 years on the MySQL community team. Been around open source for a very long time. And I'm excited to be here today because there's a lot of folks who want to learn Postgres. And they also um, either want to learn Postgres or they need to learn SQL. And Postgres is one of the more easier ways to learn things. Now, we're going to showcase an option that doesn't require you to install Postgres or have access to a server or beg for an account or uh, go out and buy some time on the cloud. Uh, we're going to use a, play, a website called pgexercises.com, which bundles access to a server and has established exercises that are really good. And uh, it's got a great user interface, as you'll see in just a couple moments. Uh, it's easy to work through these exercises, and the website provides detailed explanations and hints if you get stuck. And this webinar will complete the first five basic exercises. I hope we can get through all the first five. And we're going to detailing the steps and adding some comments that I think might be able uh, to help you down the road. Um, this webinar is a benefit for anyone who's new to Postgres, anyone wanting to learn SQL. Uh, th this is, you know, the as mer minimal cost as you're going to get trying to learn Postgres these days. And uh, the, the great thing is uh, there's no cost to any of this. Now, uh, the basis exercises are easy to complete. Um, there's some other side notes that I'll add uh, to help quantify stuff. And... Um, as the more Postgres relevant stuff comes in the forefront after the primary uh, exercises, uh, a lot of this transposes to other relational databases. So um, let's get uh, uh, headed off. Uh, by the way, if you get stuck, uh, rewind this, try again, uh, reread the hints, uh, make changes. I uh, also expect you to do things wrong. Uh, you learn by breaking things and getting things fixed. So let's go here to the first exercise. And the first one, as you can see, there's groups for basic joins and queries, modifying data, aggregates, and all that. Uh, we're going to try to get through the first five simple queries. Now, as it says, this category deals with the basics of SQL, it covers select and where clauses, case expressions. Um, this is all fairly well documented on the Postgres site and in uh, SQL books. Uh, they recommend in this website, Learning SQL by uh, Alan Bailu. I'm sure I'm butchering both names there. Uh, also, you can look at an introduction by database systems by CJ Date, which is kind of a, a high-end book, but it's also a great reference. So let's start with the first exercise. Okay, as you see, the uh, the UI here is uh, very well laid out. And the first exercise is retrieve everything from a table. Well, what is a table? Data is stored, kind of like a spreadsheet, in rows and columns. 
Uh, in the Postgres world, that's normally called, HRO is called a tuple. Uh, now, here they want to know how do you retrieve all the information from the cd.facilities table. If you take a look at this drawing underneath, this is an entity relationship map. Uh, as you see, we have three tables, cd.members, cd.bookings, and cd.facilities, and that's the one we're going to be peeking at. Now, what we want for the expected results is this information here. And the information we're going to get are the facility ID, the name, the member cost, guest cost, initial outlay, and monthly maintenance. So we're going to go out there and grab um, the data. So let me show you the select page for, for Postgres. And let me show you this documentation. Uh, reading documentation is a, is a very valuable uh, skill to have. Now here we're reading postgres.postgres.sql.org docs current uh, SQL select. So this is the select syntax for Postgres 16. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a statement that has a lot of options. Uh, don't worry about learning all the options. I'm just pointing this out for you for the future. You can go back and refer to this. So if you have questions, uh, this is where you'll go to, to to figure out the official syntax. So let me head back to, well, go back. there's the documentation. Uh, as you can see, this is the Postgres 16 syntax for, for uh, select, uh, refer back here. Let me stop sharing this. Let me go back and share the exercises. So SQL, uh, structured query language is the only language left over from the 1970s for a good reason. Uh, it's very handy. Now, the actual syntax is a little odd. Um, it kind of puts the verb first, and the verb we're going to use is select. We're going to use the shorthand star uh, to refer to all the columns. And um, we're going to get that data from this table up here called cd.facilities. And you need to put a semicolon normally at the end of a statement to tell the parser that's the end of the query. Now, if we come down here and we're not quite sure what's going on, we can hit the hint button and it'll tell you that select star can be used to retrieve all the columns from a table. Also, there's a help function here uh, for this, uh, you can save the query. Now, the trick is we want to run this query and see if what we get down here matches over here. And we do. You see that this matches over here. I'll scroll down to show you that we get everything. And we've got the lucky little green star. Now, a great feature of this website is you can come down here, answers and discussion, where they give you the answer if you get stuck. Uh, don't don't uh, kill yourself pulling your hair out. Come down, take a look, and check out what's going on. And here it tells you that the select statement is the basic starting block of queries that read information from the database. Uh, it gives us a little more information. Uh, here it tells us usually it's select a set of columns from and the table we're getting stuff from. And in this case, we're using the asterisk for all columns, which is a wild card. So let me go back to Riverside. And uh, are we going through the exercises together? Uh, we can. Uh, if you can slow down to my pace, <laughs> no problem. And uh, you're more than welcome to uh, comment. Uh, please do. And thank you, Chathan, for that. And Benny says, I apologize. I wasn't registered. Had to get through. So I was late. Do you have a link to the website with the exercises? Well, yes, I do. Um, it is called pgexercises.com. And if you go back to the uh, uh, the main page, the home page, uh, you can see it's uh, postgres.sql.com. 
and let's head on to the second uh, exercise. Now, in this case, we're being asked to retrieve specific columns from a table. And uh, the, the explicit question is, you want to print out a list of all the facilities and their cost to members. How would you retrieve a list of only facility names and costs? Well, um, this can be tricky in the real world. You know, here we're lucky and we know that they have all the facilities information in the cd.facilities table. Uh, by the way, the first time I started doing these exercises, I thought the database name was CD and the table was facility. Uh, actually, the full table name is cd.facilities. So what we want is the name of the facility, which is here, and the member cost, which is here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use select statement. And that's kind of the verb of what we're doing and the nouns we want name and we want member cost from cd dot facilities uh let's take a look at the hint just to make sure we're not giving away something uh the select statement allows you to specify column names to retrieve okay so we're selecting name we're selecting member cost from facilities make sure we're answering the question you want a list of only the facility names and costs so so far so good let's run the query ah and we get the green check and we are told we see that we have the same information as we have over here now if you notice this is a little different in that Table tennis is number four over here, and it's number one here. Uh, sometimes data is stored in a unordered way in your tables, and the system grabs it as easy as it can. So something like this is this does give the same results, but uh, you might want to figure out a little bit later if you need to sort this by some sort of other column or not. So let's go down and take a look at the answer and discussion. Uh, for this question, we need to specify columns that we want. We do that with a simple comma, a limited list of column names. All the database has to do is look at the columns available in the from clause and return the ones we asked for. Um, generally speaking, for non-throwaway queries, it's considered desirable to specify the names of columns you want in the queries rather than using star. One of the problems with using the uh, star or asterisk is that if you have a very wide table, you are reading and forwarding a lot of information that you don't need. Uh, it's wasteful and um, it's better to uh, be stricter with yourself. Okay, let me go back, see if we have any new questions. And thank you, Lindsay, for putting the the URL out there. Now let's go back to the exercises. Let's take a look at the next exercise. By the way, if you like this, we're just doing the first five today. Um, if you want me to go through the rest of these or parts of these or whatever, um, please let us know and we'll see what we can work out. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying this. Okay, next time, question number three, how can you produce a list of facilities that charge a fee to members? So we have facilities and we have a column named member cost. Uh, once again, in the real world, uh, you're going to need some documentation to make sure that that is uh, actually the fee charged to members. Uh, it might be a membership cost uh, to join in to be able to use that facility in the real world or have some other arcane meaning that you're not aware of. Uh, there's nothing like writing a long, complex query to come up with some information only to find out there's some obscure column that had all the information you wanted in the first place. Okay, so our expected, oh, excuse me, expected results. Uh, facility ID, the name, member cost, guest cost, initial outlay, monthly maintenance, maintenance. Okay, those are all five columns. So that's a good hint that we want a select star. And we're gonna get that 
from cd.facilities. Now here comes where SQL gets kind of um, obtuse at times. We are going to use a where clause. This is a filter on the query that says uh, how to go out and grab the information. And let's take a look at this hint. Maybe there's some clues here. Uh, the where clause is a filter. So we want the the columns or the rows where the member cost. So we put in member cost. Uh, by the way, often these things are case sensitive, and they can be. Um, in some systems, they are not case sensitive, but most of the times you're going to find them case sensitive. And um, fat fingering the wrong case um, can be a painful thing. So let's figure out if the member cost greater than zero. Uh, nice algebraic comparison operator there are the ones that will give us this answer. So um, let's run the query. Whoops. So what did I do here? I mistyped, fat fingered the name of the table. So run query again. Ah, there's our checkbox. So what we have here is the same information that we're expected to get. And let's check the discussion. Uh, the from clause is used to build up a set of candidate rows to read the results from. And once we build up the set of candidate rows, the where clause allows us to filter the, ro the rows to the specific ones we want. So here uh, we're doing a cost greater than zero. So let me go back and see if we have no more questions in chat. Uh, by the way, if you do have them, don't be shy. If you have the same question, if you have a question, it's probably three other people out there wanting to know the information, and they'll be grateful to you. Okay, so this is um, a good example of using a WHERE clause. Um, the WHERE clause itself can be rather complex, um, and uh, but it does wonderful things. By the way, don't run deletes or updates without WHERE clauses unless you can help it. Uh, it's a good way to update all your records when you only need to do one or two. Okay, control which rows are received. Um, we want to produce a list of facilities that charge a fee to members, and that fee to members is less than one fiftieth fiftieth of the monthly maintenance cost. Uh, they want the FAC ID, facility name, member cost, and monthly ma maintenance of the facilities in question. Okay, so this is getting trickier. So we know from up here that we're going to be using a select statement. Select. And we want the FAC ID the facility name, whoops, that's just name. So now you gotta double check in the real world. Uh, member cost. And monthly, monthly maintenance, M-O-N-T-H-L-Y. Okay, I'm going to change the formatting a little bit here. I'm going to put the from on its own line. And we're going to have to filter this. So we are going to have a where clause. And our where clause is um, find the maintenance cost that's less than 1 50th of the monthly maintenance cost. The fee is less than the maintenance cost. So we have uh, we have to find out the ones that have a cost. 
where member cost is greater than zero. And we need to figure out how to get that monthly maintenance cost to being less than the so member cost less than the monthly maintenance cost divided by 50. Um, one thing I like to do personally is, um, when in doubt mathematically, is to put parents around things. So make sure this monthly maintenance cost gets done by uh, 50 first before making the comparison. That's the way uh, it gets parsed normally, but occasionally you like to reinforce that. So let's see if I'm successful here. By the way, let's take a look at the hint. So we're going to run the query. Oops. I once again fat finger fingered. So, so member cost is M O N T H L Y Let's run it one more time. There we go. So uh, let's take a look at the the uh, hint. Um, here's the way they format it, where they had the two word clauses uh, separated and indented. And let's see if there's any good hints in here. Um, you might have noticed this is our first query that combines a where clause with selecting specific columns. Uh, you see in below the image of what we're actually grabbing. By the way, that's a handy visual. Uh, by the way, it talks about using and to combine the two where clauses. Now, earlier I mentioned uh, using parentheses to explicitly make sure that things run the way you expect. Um, this is an old time programmer's trick because um, sometimes things break in parsers that you don't notice until things go wrong. Uh, the other thing is when you're trying to debug this code at three in the morning, and it just doesn't work, and you just want to make sure they're okay. So let's rerun this query. And once again, it works. Um, something with Postgres is rather interesting, and SQL in general, is there's usually more than one way to do things. And um, sometimes things are better, sometimes they're not. But uh, be aware that there's also, also another way to do anything with sex SQL. Okay, basic string searches. Um, this is our last exercise in this webinar. Before I head to it, let me head back to uh, the chat. And you folks are quiet, so let me go back. Okay, basic string searches. How can you produce a list of all facilities with the word tennis in their name? Well, what that means is we're going to have to search the cds.facilities table for uh, the name column for that. Let's see what the hint says. Ah, it says use the SQL like operator. So we're going to, by the way, come over here and see what they want. Uh, FAC ID, name, member cost, guest cost, initial LA, monthly maintenance. Uh, select star from CD dot. facilities where, and we're going to uh, search on the name column, or name like, and this is the like operator, and we're, we're going to look for the string tennis. Now, if we search just for tennis like this, um, it's only going to see those six letters, tennis. It's not going to see tennis court one. Uh, table tennis, it's not going to see. Uh, it's just going to see if there's any matches that come up that exactly match tennis. So we have to use a wild card. Uh, as you saw here, we use asterisks as a wild card for all columns. For strings, we use the percent 
sign as our wildcard. And let's run the query and see how we do. Whoops. Once again, I have fat fingered the table name. Fix that. Okay, we have the answer. So let's go down to uh, the answer discussion. Uh, the like operator provides a match pattern matching uh, operator on strings. Uh, it's pretty much universally implemented. Uh, this also works on MySQL. Uh, it's simple to use. Uh, do I don't want you to search big strings in your databases? Um, uh, kind of like running your own Google at home or other search engine? No, it doesn't work very well. Um, by the way, there's also other operators like regular expressions you can use that might be more powerful, might uh, do what you want easier. Uh, but this is a fairly simple example. Now let me show you what happens if I get rid of this last uh, percent mark and I run the query. Of course it fails and it picked up anything tennis, but it missed tennis court one and tennis court two. And if I do the similar thing on the end, uh, on the other end, uh, which is not what we want to do, uh, you'll just see tennis court one and two, you'll miss table tennis. So that was five exercises in roughly half an hour. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you've written some queries using structured query language and received data from a Postgres server. Uh, that is actually an impressive accomplishment. Uh, if you're a novice at SQL, um, you've taken some major steps forward into learning more about it. SQL is a powerful language. It was the most popular, according to the uh, IEEE, uh, International Engineers Association, uh, a year or two ago. Uh, it's used in businesses all over the world. Uh, hopefully, you can keep going with this. Um, please continue to work forward with PG exercises on this. Now, if you're learning, learning Postgres, um, um, you, and you know basic SQL, uh, not a lot of Postgres-isms in here, but you now have access to a Postgres instance that you can go through and work the rest of the exercises and improve your skills. Uh, yes, there are some very Postgres-specific things in later exercises that uh, will challenge you. Now, I'd, I'd like to thank you all for attending this. Uh, we'd love your feedback, your comments. Uh, I'd like to know if you want me to carry on. Do we do too much content, too little content? Uh, do I move too slow, too fast? We want to uh, make this a learning opportunity for you and the rest of the internet. So please uh, come back and give us some feedback and uh, let us know how you feel about this. And uh, we'll go from there. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Dave. This was great. Um, and you. in terms of all that feedback, uh, like I normally do, I will send out a uh, recording of this webinar and email when it all goes out. So please feel free to just respond directly to me and Dave, I can send that feedback your way. Okay. Beautiful. Um, and both Lindsay and I are fairly easy to find on the internet. So if you're too shy too. to do it through the official channels, <laughs> send us an email or, or some other. Exactly. Exactly. So, hey, thank you so much, Dave. This was great. My instinct is that we're going to want to do follow up with the next five exercises. Um, okay. And I will wait to hear from everyone how excited they are for that. Um, so thank you. Thank you to our attendees. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day. And I'll see you on future Postgres conference webinars. Cheers. Adios.